Hello, everybody. Uh, after a lot of demand and requests to continue recording some DSO Photo Lab tutorials, here's another one for you. I just shot this one last week. Uh, it's uh, Robin sitting on a small tree. It's early spring, so the leaves haven't sprouted yet. And it was an overcast day with uh, rain in the forecast. So it looked like an interesting shot. Um, but what I wanted to do with this picture is make the robin stand out a bit more and the first thing I ended up doing is just kinda of correcting some of the exposure things and this can be done to your taste um, not a lot needed to be done here it's it's a fairly well exposed there's a lot, a lot of bright in the corners here with the sky the shadows aren't too bad so what I ended up doing is lowering a little bit of the highlights just to kinda of recapture some of that detail but I only went a little bit in my original shot and um, I believe I raised the mids and shadow a little bit as well to kind of balance it out and what I like to do is I like to see if this DxO Clearview Plus option does anything beneficial for my picture uh, I'd like to use it a lot of times because it helps with uh, bring some really dramatic contrast out helps bring out some details in some areas and it makes colors a lot more vibrant and vivid and especially since the only color in this picture appears to be this robin's belly uh, I'm curious to see if it'll help or not and it does but I don't like what it does with the rest of the image so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off for the time being and yes if you do want to play with it and if you do find it that you like it you can adjust slider to adjust the effect that you get out of it. And you know, I might stick with that where I've got it right here, right around 19 or so. I also like to play with contrast a little bit. I don't like to add too much. Um, but fine contrast, if you go very subtle with this, it can help to really sharpen those edges. And notice I don't go crazy with that. I'm only increasing it by, well, in this case, 9. And since one of our goals is to adjust the robin's belly to be more vibrant, I'm going to go ahead and dramatically raise the vibrancy, and I might play with the saturation a little bit as well. And if you're not familiar with vibrancy and saturation, they both affect how rich your color is. But saturation, if you go too high on that, you can get some color bleeding, whereas vibrancy is very similar to saturation in how it increases the color um, vividness. But it helps prevent some of that bleed and um, so I stick more with the vibrancy than I do with saturation I don't think there was much else I wanted to do with this picture I might change the color rendering um, I like to stick with my camera body um, camera body rendering just because it's you know more in tune with what I saw out of the camera versus how it's rendering itself and no, I don't own these cameras, but these are the closest ones that is in the package. I, I use a Canon M5, and it's very similar to what these profiles produce. The next thing I want to do here is do some local adjustments. So I'm going to scroll to this local adjustment area right here because we're going to play with this new feature that they just added in Photolab 3. If you don't have Photolab 3, you're not going to see this local adjustments area right here where we can play with the masks a little bit and we're gonna do something kinda of cool here that I'm not sure if anyone else has done before in a tutorial or not but um, once I saw that I could do this <clears throat> I got kinda of excited for it so we're gonna go ahead and open our local adjustments and we're gonna play with the control points so if I right click you can see I'm already on selected on the control point and my goal is to make that round belly much brighter and vibrant so I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and notice I'm going to have to adjust this circle size. So I'm just going to shrink that down to the robin's belly. Uh, one thing to note, too, that the control point is kind of like an auto mask. It's going to select a range of pixels in a, in a color scheme, a color range, I should say, that's similar to the point you select. So ideally, even though we're overlapping some of the bird's darker back and wing, it should only affect primarily on the belly because I select the orange for the belly. 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slightly increase the exposure to make it a little bit brighter, but I'm not going to go very high. I'm just going to go just maybe a half, half stop or so. But what I really want to do is come back to color and increase that vibrancy even more. And if I want to, I can play with the saturation as well. And if I want to zoom out and take a look at this, that's looking a lot more standout than it did before. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to, I, I want to make this sky a little bit more, a little brighter so it stands out more from the background here. There's a vignette here for my lens I used. I'm going to increase exposure so it's a lot brighter. And I might find our highlights, bring that up. And we've got a little bit more contrast in the scene where it separates the sky from the trees and the branches and the bird. And if we look closely here too, we can see there's some purple going on here in the tree branches. That's some purple fringing. I didn't notice that earlier so well. So I'm gonna scroll down to our lens corrections which is under detail and we're going to just check purple fringe and when we render this it should clean some of this up. I'm going to come back up to this local adjustments section. Remember how I said we're going to play with this for a little bit, right? Well this control point, if we turn it on and off just to check, we can see I was going too fast. Let's give it some time to load. It was affecting the, the bird if we turn the visibility off and then back on we can see the difference made. Well what if we wanted to keep this belly nice and vivid but we want to make the background which is already very very bland to begin with what if we want to take all that color out that's given the browns to the tree branches and everything else here and we want to make this more of a black and white even though it lacks color to begin with. Well I'm going to come down here and I am going to duplicate the mask I'm going to select it and then I'm going to hit this invert mask button. I need to come back to local adjustments. Now I have to adjust this mask. So exposure I might just reset by double clicking. And I'm going to come over to color. Instead of these vibrancy and saturations being so high up, let's take them all the way down on both levels. And we can see now a robin still remains colorful but our image overall is a pretty contrasty black and white. And I might come back to this mask here that we played with the sky and just re increase that ever so slightly. And there you have it. We've added this picture so that the robin has a little bit more vibrancy in the picture and we use our mask control tools, our local adjustments, to take the color away from the background while keeping it here in the robin here and adjusting a little bit with the sky. I hope you've enjoyed this. Follow me for more. I will be producing more as I have time to. Uh, I don't know how frequently that will be, but I will promise I will make a better attempt as it than I did before. Uh, so subscribe, follow me. I hope to hear, from more, hear uh, more requests from you. Thank you.